this point where I was feeling like this conflict within myself because I was like, I don't belong on a reservation. And if I don't belong on a reservation, then where do I belong? As soon as we got here, I started connecting really fast. And um, like this, this place is like where I'm from and I just love it so much and nobody can take that away from me. We're in the Middle Fork Salmon River, and this place is really important to me. It's got all of these places and stories with it. Some of the people who are interested in this place and who have knowledge about this place, they're getting older now. And because they're getting older now, we need to make sure that what they know gets passed on to the next generation. Because there's been too many generations that we have not lived here. It's been over 100 years now that we haven't been in this place, and so we want to come back to it and be here again. Avish, a long, long time ago. The immigrants came to this country. And the Indian people here, we helped them survive. We showed them the foods, we showed them how to grow things. But now they have that history, they have that knowledge. There's the obligation of the scientists to return that favor to the Indian people. So as a person not from these lands, you know, my ancestors uh, removed the people from this, this territory, from this river. And, uh, and the hope and the, the idea behind this trip is to bring the people back to the water, back to the river, to blend these different ways of knowing, the, the Western science along with the indigenous science and the indigenous knowledge, and start to ask questions that bring these two ways of knowing more together, more in line. Hello, man. How old are you? Yeah. Pull them out and again. Yeah, and the, you know, the best way is to pick, sort of randomly pick a spot and pick all the muscles from that spot.
How's the water? Pretty cold. But it's not so bad when she starts swimming and really moving. Yeah, I got one in there, a small one. 14.6 centimeters. Okay. Looks like some primary production, some plant growth. Just their, so they're they're filter feeding all kinds of nutrients. So what is, here, but, what's your dissertation on? That's the mouth. Oh, really? It's old. 100 years old. It's a grandpa one. So your hand is probably 100 years in muscle years. <laughs> when I was younger, the, we'd go to these, some of these places to gather freshwater mussels. In some of those places, there's just not as many. We're asking a different question as Native people. We eat freshwater mussels traditionally, and so we want to understand what's going on there a little bit more. Uh, make sure that we're not going to drive some other species into extinction. A lot of the ways that science is done, it's subjective to bring your family and to include your community in what you're doing. There's this purity of objectivity that really bothers me and it's really bothered me the way I was raised. So when we would go out to hunt, to gather, to fish, all those things that we do, we did them as a family and I feel like scientific research as an ecologist is really similar and I felt like there was always this part missing. You look at the world as many truths and in those many truths I have to see the world through my daughter's eyes through, as a three-year-old. I have to see the world through my wife's eyes as a, as a, as a, as a woman, as a provider, a nurturer. Um, um, so I have to do those things and it helps me become a better scientist and I would say more truly as a na native scientist as I was raised. So hello tree. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's smell it. What does it smell like? Okay. <laughs> Smells good. <laughs> 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 it's all gone. No more cambium there. The spring, a lot of the nutrients in the roots go back up yeah. to feed the leaves. We want Field. to, as a family, collect that cambium for its nutrition, but also to let people know that we're still That's here as native people, as Shoshone people. We're not gone. <laughs> we have very, very much. You know, young ones that are growing up that are learning that this is their home. I was telling my daughters that I just feel so grateful that they're going to know this river for their whole lives. <laughs> are you ready? We've got the Camas Creek fire it started in the Camas Creek area. Since we've been on the river, it's grown from 400 acres to I think over a thousand. You can really smell it too. The heavy smell of smoke, and there's another hot spot up there. Fires are real important to this uh, environment. It allows uh, new growth to come up and it you know, gets rid of old growth and distributes that nutrients in the ashes. And that's how we get a diverse ecosystem in here. Although most fires are lightning strike fires in Idaho, a few are man-made and this is a camp and a stop along the river and they thought this might be a man-made, somebody being careless with their fire. Right there, Dan. We're taking pictures of past depressions. The depressions are where our people move the dirt out, and then it's a living spot. And then we have trees that come over uh, and make the the top of the house. So we have the use area, and then the shelter part. 
this then establishes that it's a the archaeological site and then we have to inform the public that they can't stay they can't sleep up in an archaeological site because it's preservation and then there's federal laws that would prohibit damaging of these, these kind of sites I'm trying to chase him out of here so he won't have to bite anybody. I'm scared of water snakes, not rattlesnakes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I had my sleeping bag up and over here to air out, and I picked it up to take it off, and I heard a rattle, and I thought it was like a zipper or something. So I shook it harder, and, it, and the sound got louder. I thought that doesn't make sense, so I moved it, and I saw the rattlesnake jump back. I thought the rapids were the scariest thing on the boat. <laughs> there could be excitement at any second. 80 miles of taking care of you and you're still nervous? The rock's a lot bigger now. Mm -hmm. I'm super trustworthy on the oars. Uh, we're gonna go backwards on purpose. Tim needs, uh, he needs a, refreshing, a refreshing ride. <laughs> oh, Damn, how do we do? Good, no hands. <laughs> Here comes Alonzo. Last three white water guy. When I'm asked to row, I get I freak the hell out. Oh my god, it scares me. And when we're going down rapids, all I see is just a bunch of white and me closing my eyes. because when, when we come back into this river to join our, our ancestors, that there may be a message here that is meant for us as the descendants of the Tukaleka. And that message, it has a meaning for us and we have to find it. And we have to understand what that means. tombstone it's hard to say what happens from the weather as far as like these parts that chip off um, this could be from the weather but when you actually see these scratches in the wall and that someone was trying to scratch these off the wall uh, what you're seeing and what we're witnessing is uh, real um, physically uh, erasing the culture from the land I don't know the feelings of that emotion that takes someone to take something that could be, you know, hundreds to thousands of years old and scratching it off the wall, scratching someone's history off the wall. It's pretty um, heartbreaking and sad to see this kind of um, destruction to our historical sites and our cultural sites.
Midama Appa, the creator, and Sogobia, Mother Earth. Make happiness in all of our hearts. Listen that. Bless you. Thank you. Falling in love with you, hey oh.